Hello Hamilton, it's that time again to get up, get off the couch and start tackling your own to-do lists at home. I am Bob Asadorian. welcome to the Just Ask Bob Show. On today's show, I've put together a prop for you, sort of a simulation on a kitchen. We've got a countertop, we've got the kitchen backsplash wall, we've got everything ready. We're going to simulate, we're going to show you how to lay tile. We've got some electrical outlets that I put in myself, they're not live. Uh, we've got tile, regular tile. We're going to show you how to install the tile. We're also going to show you the proper tools to use. We're going to show you the proper applying procedures. And very important, we're going to showcase some really awesome products. A very nice tool by Rotozip, a wet tile saw. It's going to be terrific, and it's very important. I mean, tiling is probably on the higher end of you know the do it the do it yourself DIY type of projects you can do at home. But once you learn how to do it, there's a lot of places you can apply it. You can apply it to all your bathrooms. You can apply it to the kitchen, even a basement bathroom. Now we'll start off by getting to the first email here. Hey Bob, my husband is not very handy, and money is too tight right now to hire a contractor. Bob, can you come over to my home and teach me how to tile my kitchen backsplash? I live in a five-year-old home and would like to finally get some nice tile up in the kitchen. Please, please, Linda Hamilton, Ontario. Well, Linda, we do have a Facebook contest running. Now, this one doesn't quite qualify. Like us on Facebook, give us some of the details, uh, fill out our quick submit form on the website. But I'll tell you what, Linda, we are going to teach you today and we're going to teach you the right way to do it. We're going to go through some of the products and tools. Now, in this case, We've got wall tile. Now, generally speaking, wall tile is thin. Floor tile is much thicker, stronger material. Now, usually a good rule of thumb would be wall floor tile you can install on the wall, but wall tile you would never want to install on the floor. So that's important. Again, in this case, we've just got a plain six by six white tile. Some of the supplies you're gonna need, a putty knife to spread the uh, mastic, in this particular case, uh, green Robertson screwdriver, that's going to be to remove the outlets. It's also very handy to have a small level in this case to be able to tamp your tiles down, make sure you keep them level. Now what I prefer, especially when using a wet tile saw, I prefer using a china marker to do the markings. Tape measure, obviously. Now it depends where your cuts end up. If they end up on an inside wall where another tile is going to be butted up against it, you don't have to worry, but a nice, a nice to have a stone handy. Uh, this will smooth down the rough edge because once you cut the tile on the wet saw, you will have a rough edge. Now we'll take a moment to talk about, well, outlet covers, decora. Now this is going to be very important depending on what your patience level is. Now these two outlets are both for decoras. I hold them up there properly. This is a standard one. This is an oversized. So you can see the oversized is taller and the oversized is wider. Now that's going to be very important depending how your cuts line up. If you're perfect, if you're good, you can put on the regular decora. But if you've broken a lot of tile and you're getting sick and tired of it, uh, good idea is to use oversized outlet covers because it will hide the cut and you'll have a beautiful job. In tiling, it's all about the cuts. Now if we take a moment to talk about the mastic, and in this case, yes, it is mastic. Now this particular manufacturer and this product is recommended for wet applications, it's recommended for tiling a floor, but please Hamilton, don't do it. And I've got to be honest with you here, I have your best interest at heart, not the manufacturers. Their number one, uh, number one thing on their minds is to sell product. So they only care about sales going out the door. So be very careful. This is perfectly fine for a backsplash or a wall application that's not in a wet area. So very important. Kitchen backsplash, even some tile in the bathroom wall, but not above the bathtub. And I don't care what the manufacturer tells you. If you're tiling above your bathtub or in your shower stall, thin set. Thin set and thin set only. Thin set has um, concrete properties in it, Portland cement. That's going to give you the strength and that's going to give you a waterproof installation. And obviously, absolutely bizarre that they even recommend doing this on the floor. For any floor application, you want strong tile, uh, strong tile bond, you want thin set. Now, I have something very handy for people here. It's a, it's a notch series guide. Now believe me, this is important. You can find this online, on the internet. You can find it at a big box store. The trial we're gonna use today for the application guide, if you read in here, adhesive. So these top three are for adhesive. 
the bottom ones are for thin set. Again, as I mentioned earlier, doing a floor tile or doing above a bathtub. So now, wall tile, six inch or smaller, and that's what we have. We have six by six inch tile. You look at the notches, you line it up, bingo. Now please don't install six by six tile in a backsplash with this guy. You're gonna end up squishing, thin, squishing the adhesive everywhere. This, if you look at it, looks like it's right there. So it's a quarter by three eighths by one quarter. So you're gonna use that for thin set for a tile that's eight inch to 16 inch or larger. So again, very important. Another item here, well yes, you're gonna to wanna to have some type of uh, respiratory protection only when you're cutting through the tile. You're gonna to wanna to make sure you've got safety glasses on. And another tool here that we have, I call this the tile nipper. We'll show you later on how we use this. Basically it's for making little nip cuts. Now if we take a moment to talk about spacers. Today we're gonna to be using, only if we need to, one and a sixteenth. Now let me show you something, these particular tiles they have the spacer built in. It's not flat, it's got that little bit of a nub. So what happens is when the two tiles come together, you have your space. So spacers are not required. The spacing is pre-built in at one and a sixteenth. At a, at a sixteenth. Now just in case we've got a tile that's cut and the little nub out isn't there, then we'll use the spacers. Now we've got to worry about gravity. Everything wants to settle. In this particular case, I'm going to use 3 16 spacers right on top of the backsplash of the countertop. The reason is you want to have that nice gap and you want to fill it with clear silicone. You don't want your tile, in the case of flexibility or the wall shifting, you don't want it on top of a solid surface like a countertop. Now, my very favorite tool. I love this and you're going to love it after watching today's show. This is the Tile Dock by Rotozip. This is absolutely phenomenal because for small tile, you can place your tile here, you can make the cutouts. Now if we're doing a large tile job, you can fit a 12 by 12 in here. Now it's a really nice tool to use because you've got the clamps built in, you've got these little blocks here that can be adjusted to hold your tile. We're going to test this out in a moment, but I just want to show you some more tools here. We've also got the sliding saw and we've also got the, uh, the uh, wet saw, so it's very important to have that. This is nice for making just a straight cut, that's all that it can do. If you have to make a cut that has an angle, then it's very important you use the wet saw. Now we're going to take a moment to show you what the roto zip can do. Now it's very important that we line up the tile so that the saw goes through. You have to be careful with the clamps, you don't want to apply too much pressure. Okay, once again by Rotozip, fantastic bit, it is perfect for going through tile and there's other bits that go through floor tile, so you have to make sure the bit that you're buying, whether it's for floor tile or whether it's for wall tile. Now this isn't easy, it wants to skip, so what I like to do is set the drill on reverse, I want to reverse it just a tad, then set it on forward. Nice perfect cut, we're going to take a quick break, then we're going to show you exactly where this cut applies on your wall. We're going to take a quick break, we'll be right back, we're going to start tiling the kitchen backsplash. Welcome back to the Just Ask Bob show. Time to time, Bob run in, runs into really cool products and gadgets. So we're going to do a theme here every now and then. It's going to be Just Ask Bob's top picks. And my top pick today is this toilet seat. Now you're probably wondering, what's in a toilet seat? Let me show you. 
This toilet seat can save marriages. I'll tell you, in the middle of the night when I go, I forget to put the toilet seat down. My wife gets infuriated, so she'll slam it, and that gets me to jump out of bed. So watch this. We've got the seat raised. This seat cannot be slammed, Hamilton. I'm telling you, it cannot be slammed. And it doesn't matter if you're only lifting the lid. Let's lift it all up, and let's really give it a good slam here. I like to think of myself as a strong fellow. That was a pretty good slam. This seat is ultra quiet, ultra sleek, ultra modern, and it's definitely earned itself the top pick for Just Ask Bob. Now, we're, while, while we're on the seat, I have a very special announcement to make. The Home Depot on Stone Church on Hamilton Mountain is now the new sponsor, material construction sponsor for the Just Ask Bob show. So obviously they provide us with what we need, such as the toilet seat, countertop, tiles, drywall, whatever is required to put together this half hour show. So a very big thank you from Just Ask Bob to the Home Depot. Now, if you just tuned into the show, today's show obviously is about tiles. We have a little simulation here that I've propped and put together. Kitchen countertop, your backsplash, some outlets there in the kitchen and switches. We've talked about the variety of products. We've told people to, when to use thin set when you're doing floor tile or tile in a wet area. In this particular case today, we're gonna to be using mastic, which is completely fine because it's not a wet area. It's only wall tile. You're not gonna be stepping on it. Let me set this aside. Now I've talked about this before on past Hamilton Life segments that the number one problem homeowners get into when tiling and even the professionals is they don't want to take the time to fuss and do what I like to call a dry bond, a layout. If you don't do that you're going to have the problem of peeling off wet tiles or nothing lines up. So take a moment, follow me through this. The very first step divide the wall in half or divide the floor in half. This applies in just about every circumstance. Ideally you want to have full tile, full tile, full tile, you're cut. Full tile, full tile, full tile, you're cut. Now, tiles are baked, they may shrink, they may, there's irregularities. Not every tile is exactly the same. So what I like to do is forget the tape measure for a moment, let's do a dry run. So we'll start right here. Again, sometimes it's not easy and it's important to have a helper when you need one. The reason for the dry run is to eliminate any slivers because if you end up with something that's too small, you're going to have problems. Now again, thankfully this is a small area. Okay, that's perfectly acceptable. It looks like we've got about three and a half, four inches. That's fine. So we're going to leave it at that. Now if we ended up with something that small, that's a sliver. So you don't wanna, you don't wanna leave a sliver. So again, the dry run is important. And we've done the dry run with the real tile, the same tile we're gonna be laying. If you just sorta of try to do the tape measure and get a measurement off each tile, depends how long your run is and it depends if the tile's irregular, you may have a problem. Okay, now to grab our mastic. So we're going to take a moment to explain the outlets now. There's a reason why I left these undone. Now people have to understand if you really, really want to get in here and get a good look for homeowners, these are the ears of the outlet. So these ears have to sit on the finished tile. There's no way around it. You're not going to put your tile there. If you do that, you're in a lot of trouble. So what you're going to do is loosen these up. Make sure the power is off. This is my prop here so nothing's live. And I get these loosened up. Now there's a second way to do it. If you want to have a peek at the outlet on the right, that's a three gang box. So obviously in a lot of people's homes you may have uh, one sw two switches, one for your under cabinet lighting, one for your kitchen light, and one for an outlet. So there's two ways to do it. This way here, you keep it intact, you install your tile, you make absolutely certain that you can get into that screw hole. Another way to do it is to simply leave the screws in and as long as you make sure that your tile is up to here, cover plate's going to fit. That's what's important. If you go up too high, you're going to have problems here and you may chip or break the tile. 
Oh, one final thing now. Obviously, homeowners realize this isn't supposed to be a bathroom, but there's a very good reason for this. Just before the break, I demonstrated the roto zip. I made a nice hole here, and I wanted people to understand that when you have the proper tools, yes, you can do it yourself. This is typically the type of hole you're going to make when you're doing uh, the tile above your bathtub, or in any case, anywhere that you have a hole. Now, once the hole's made, you have the cover plate. The cover plate is made to fit perfectly for half inch copper. You slide the cover on, you pop it through your copper, hence you've got a beautiful cut, a beautiful job. So I'm sort of uh, using my same prop here to do a little bit of a mix of a shower head, but I just want people to understand. Okay, now time for the mastic. You basically just want to get it on. Then you're going to use your trowel to smooth it out, to sort of comb in the ridges. Now again, everything is washable with water, but you want to make sure you've got your countertop covered, you want to make sure you've got some tape here. It's very important that you work neat. You know, if homeowners are doing it themselves, more than likely they're going to work very neat. But what I hear is non-stop complaints about when they hire a contractor, and fine, he's doing one job in one room of the home and he ends up damaging the countertop or nicking the walls on his way out. So it's very important for the trades to be very conscientious in people's homes. Okay, now we talked about this earlier. This is the key. This is what's going to support the tile. This is very important. That is the exact amount required as per that sheet I was telling homeowners that you can get online, you can get at your big box store. If these are not the exact proper space, which is defined by the tool, you're going to be installing your tile and you're going to be gushing. The, 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 the um, adhesive itself will be squirting out. want to get it right to the bottom. You want to constantly be cleaning this off. Now we use the other end to get in here. Like I mentioned before, I want to use spacers on the bottom. You don't want the tile resting right on the countertop. So we're going to put a few spacers in. Now it's extremely important that you're level. If the countertop's not level, you're going to have to adjust these accordingly. So if you're not level, you've got to double them up or do whatever is required. The ideal would be to lift the countertop. Now this is my studio prop, so it's level. Now, we have to remember our line, and we have to keep it at the line. Now, once it's on, give it a nice tap, wiggle it a little bit. Now, again, on this particular tile, you don't have to worry about spacing them in between because they've got the little nibs in them. You have to take your time, you have to be patient. Typically lay about three of them. Grab the level and make sure it's not bumping. You'll know, for example, if you peel that forward, it'll bump. So you wanna make sure they're tight. Nothing's worse than an unlevel wall. Now we're gonna take a quick break. We're gonna come back from the break and we're gonna tackle the hard part the very specialized cut around the outlet because the entire beauty of the job is in getting it nice and, nice and perfect around the outlet. We'll be right back. the ball before it went out, coach. Come on, Alex. The ref did not call that. I touched it. It's their ball. Don't 
foul when they inbound. Alex, good call. Sportsmanship, pass it on. Hello, welcome back to the Just Ask Bob show. If you're just tuning in, today we're working on a kitchen backsplash, teaching you exactly how to do it and how to do it right. Now, you just saw, yeah, you just watched us using the wet saw. I really tell homeowners you really need this. I'll actually give you a quick illustration. This is a wet saw. This can make L cuts. This can do a lot of nifty things. Now again, if you're on a tight budget and it's just a one-time job, you can rent these tools. Almost every tool I've shown you here, with the exception of a little putty knife, you can rent them at your local big box stores. Now this is mandatory, well, mandatory if you've got anything to cut as an L. Now what a lot of people will use is this guy because they're cheap. You can get them for 20 to $30, but they're pretty useless. I mean, this is all they can do. Just a straight, straightforward cut. You slide across, then you snap. Now who's got a room in their home without one single electrical outlet, whether it's a kitchen backsplash or a bathroom? So really you do need the wet saw. Now let's show you where we're going to use our L. Let's clean it off here a little bit. Now before the break, we ended here. We put this cut in because again, remember Hamilton. We divided the wall in half, there's our half. Full, 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 half. You finish your wall going the other way, full, 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 half. You've got a perfectly matching wall. Also very important, use the level, run it left and right. Nothing's banging, nothing's jogging, nothing's jumping. Perfect tile job, as it should be. Now we've got our L cut, let's see if I cut it right. Now again, to be absolutely positive that I cut it right, remember the ears. There's where the screw fits in. These ears will rest here. Cover plate will be perfect. That's a perfect cut. Now, we have another cut here. The beginning of the show, we talked about the tile nippers. Again, very important tool because if you picture it now, this next tile, not quite a full full tile won't work. It's going to be over the electrical box. So in this case, we took the wet saw, we made a whole bunch of slits. Slit, 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 slit. We grab the tile nippers. If I get lucky, I'm not going to crack the tile. I've broken a lot of tile, trust me. There we go. Let's give it a try. works out nice. Now again I want to take a moment to explain. People have to understand that what you have to do is always divide the room in half, always work to the left, always work to the right. You can keep the outlet in if you wish or at least you can keep the screws in because by keeping the set screws in you'll know where to start, you'll know where to stop. Tile nippers, once again, a very important tool. Again, for this guy here, which doesn't really apply to the kitchen. However, again, we've showed you how to cut the hole, put the cover on. Now, if I can take a moment to talk again about safety. It is important, as you've seen, I'm always wearing the glasses when I'm doing my cuts. Now, when I used the drill earlier and I was boring through the tile, Again, Hamilton, I apologize. I did forget to put the mask on, but you have to understand, I'm a seasoned professional. When you're doing this at home, do have respiratory protection when you're cutting and drilling because it doesn't make a lot of dust. And always make sure that you've got the glasses on. Now, I just want to take a moment to get into another email. God, I love this seat. I've got two of them at home. Okay, we'll take a moment now. Uh, dear Bob, can you recommend a primer for sealing odors? 
the, uh, this primer also has to be able to take care of knots. We've got finger jointed pine baseboard. We primered them fully with latex primer. However, a few months later, we've got this yellow bleed through, which looks like it's knots. Uh, Mary in Stony Creek, Ontario. Yes, Mary. I've been doing this for a very long time, and I can tell you. 2012 is my 10th year in business. I've always been using this guy here. Zinzer, in my opinion, as a seasoned tradesman, is the best primer you can get. Now, Zinzer does come in three categories, and they're colored. The red Zinzer is shellac base. So this is amazing at sealing uh, marker, stains, any type of a stain that would normally bleed through. The blue Zinzer is regular latex primer. The bronze goldish colored label is an oil base but again that won't be available for too much longer uh, oils being phased out so if you want to use the best use Zenzer it's shellac base so you have to uh, use mineral spirits or even if you're doing a small area use a foam brush I am just asked Bob thank you very much Hamilton for tuning in and once again we have a contest running. We're going to bring this show to your home, Hamilton. Submit, uh, like us on our Facebook page, fill in our quick submit form on our website, and we will choose a contestant, a winner, and we're going to bring the show to your home and teach you how to repair, rebuild, and renovate. Until next time, Hamilton. Thank you.